In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to build your very own WordPress blog. And I'm going to show you every step along the way so that you can follow along, even if you have no prior experience. We're going to cover the tech setup. So what domain to choose, what hosting provider to choose and how to install WordPress. And then we're going to look at customizing your website so that it looks amazing. And then most importantly, we're going to make sure your website is optimized so that it loads fast, it looks great on mobile, and your blog is visible to your audience. So if you're ready, grab your laptop and let's build this blog. To get started, the first thing we need to go to is the SiteGround website. Like I've said, the site, SiteGround is who I use for my hosting, for my own websites and for my clients' websites, and I recommend giving them a go. They're $2.99 a month for your first year for your hosting plan. Of course, you can always use a different host if you prefer as well. So we're gonna go on through and start this process. So we're going to go for the managed WordPress hosting plan. The startup plan should be more than adequate for a small website. So we're going to click on get plan and now you're going to need to choose your domain. So you may already have a domain from another domain registrar, but if you do not, I would recommend finding something that is associated either your business name or your name or your blog name or just make something up that you feel like you want to have as the title for your website or your blog and you're going to want to when you come up with one you're going to want to put it in here and see if it is available and you can have this is the extension and you can have all these different extensions so it's not if it's not available in the .com extension you can pick one of these other extensions to see if it is available you have some country specific ones and there's a couple of these different ones as well. Probably best to stick to the most popular ones if you can, but there are others there if you really can't find your website available. So the next thing you need to go to is just go to continue. When you find one that is available, you need to fill in your account details and your payment information and go on ahead and purchase your startup deal that will get you your hosting plan plus your domain for free. You don't need to bother about any of these other things for now. You'll see that you can get all of this, which is 44.13 and that is everything you need to get started for your first year of running your blog. Once you've that done, you'll be asked whether you want to start a new website or migrate an existing website. So for this case, we're going to select start a new website. It's going to ask us what would we like to install on the website and we're going to click WordPress because this will be a blog website. So we're going to select that and then you need to put in your WordPress credentials. So that's your email address and password that you'll need to use in order to log into your WordPress. Then click on continue and just a few minutes then and your website will be up and running. There we have it. Our website has been created. We can actually just go and view our website and it won't show us much. It will show the default template or theme that WordPress is used. So that technically is our website up and live and working. But what we want to do is we first want to go and access our WordPress dashboard. And we can go to that via this button here. This is going to walk us through a startup wizard. We're not going to do any of this for now. I'm going to just walk you through how I would create this. So you can just exit wizard. That will take us to our WordPress dashboard. So this is basically your empty website. Section two then. This is where we're going to start building our WordPress blog. We're going to look at what themes and tools we need to build our blog. If you'd like to learn more about building websites and growing your business, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I'd really like to have you along. The first thing we want to do is we want to do, make a few changes to some of the settings. So you'll understand a little bit more what all of these different sections mean as we go through and use them. So what I first want you to do is to hover over this settings icon and go to general. And this is where we see some of our website settings. So you can put in your title for your website here, your tagline. This can be a description, a descriptive way of describing your website. Our site icon then is the little icon that appears in the top of the browser tab. So whenever lots of people or people have lots of different tabs open on their website, they can see that they're on your website by the little icon here. Now, if you don't have a logo yet, what you can do, because your site icon typically will be part of your logo, you can go to a website called Logo maker and you can create yourself a free logo so you can have a look through here and see if there's anything that you like the look of or you can start and make one from scratch
So that would be a perfect little logo that I could use. And typically what your icon can be then is if you have an icon as part of your logo, so you can download this, save this as your logo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna download low resolution PNG file. That's exactly what we need. We can do this all for free. I'm gonna pop in my email there. So there is my brand new logo created in just seconds. So we've downloaded that. What we can do now is we can get rid of this bit and I'm going to use this star as my site icon because it was part of my logo. I'm gonna make that even bigger. I'm gonna make it take up the full size just so that if we wanna make it smaller or bigger in the future, it will, we will maintain the quality. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna save this one. I'm gonna save this as my icon. I would recommend giving yourself, say, five minutes maximum to have a look, make a logo, create your icon, don't spend too much time worrying about this. We can get really bogged down in making the, all the little things perfect. You don't need to. Get something created that you like the look of and move forward. Now we're ready to go back to our website and we can put in our site icon then. So all we want to do is click on the button, choose a site icon, select files, and this will take you to your files in your computer. Select the file you just saved. the site icon, put that into your media library. We can put a title and then alt text. Always helps Google to find and recommend your website to your readers. We're gonna, we don't need to crop that. Well, actually it makes it a little bit um, squarer. So you'll be able to see now that this is how that will appear. We'll have this nice little star in the browser tab for our website. Now we're gonna leave this the same. Don't worry about my URL here for, the ins for this tutorial. I'm just putting it onto a temporary domain, but your website domain should be in here. This is the admin email that you had as part of your sign up process. And here we can adjust how the date format is shown on your blog. So depending on where you are in the country will depend on how you like to see this. You might hear, I would usually have date, month and year would be probably the most suitable for me. So I'm gonna change that. And obviously you can put the time to what you want as well. I'm gonna just click on save changes. The next thing we'll do is click on settings and then reading. And we wanna say your home page displays at a static page. Although we don't actually have any pages yet, but that's uh, that will be uh, resolved soon. I wanna just go to permalinks then. We wanna just make sure we have the correct permalink structure. So just make sure that post name is selected. That would mean your URL will be the first part of the website address followed by the, the post name. Whenever you create a new blog post, your post name will be after the first part of the URL. Okay, now we're gonna go and we're going to install a few plugins. First one we're gonna install is Elementor. So we need to click on plugins at the top, add new plugin, go over to search plugins and type in Elementor. Now Elementor has a free and a paid plan. We are gonna do as much as we can with our free plan. So you do not need to sign up for the Elementor Pro. So here's Elementor, click on install now and activate. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to go to appearance and themes. Elementor just want you to set up some of your website details. So you will need to, do we need to? I don't think we need to set up an account. Skip and we're gonna skip. We've already done this, so we don't need to do that. Site logo, yeah, we can pop in our site logo here. Remember I have my icon here. Now I'm gonna load my logo. Select, go next. We're gonna skip this part as well. Okay, this has brought us straight into Elementor. We don't want to be in this right now. What we wanna do is we want to go up to these three lines, click on that and click on exit. And I like this one to go back to my WP dashboard that will take us right back to the dashboard whenever we click on back here. So I'm gonna click on apply there. So now we're going to change our theme. So we wanna click on appearance and then themes, add a new theme. In here in search themes, we're going to put Astra. The reason I'm using Elementor and Astra as a combination for the technology we're gonna to use to build our blog is because they've both been around for a long time. They have a great amount of support available and I would trust that they were gonna stay around for the, at least for the prolonged future. If you go with a theme or a page builder that is lesser known, you don't know will that be supported in the future. You don't know whether they'll continue to update the theme or the plugin. So that would be why I would suggest going with more of the more well-known themes and plugins when it comes to building your website. So here we have the Astra theme. We're going to install it and activate. Now we're going to go back to plugins. Now you'll see here that this conveniently brought up this um, 
prompt to get us to install the starter templates plugin. So if it doesn't pull this up for some reason, all you need to do to is go to add new plugin, search for starter templates. But this has brought us here anyway, so I'm just gonna click on this button to install the starter templates plugin. And I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to go back. So now we have Elementor and we have our starter templates plugin. Let's just click on get started. We're not going to use the AI website builder. We're going to go to the, for the classic starter templates. You will see that there is a vast number of templates that you can use. Not all of them are free. So just be aware of that. For the case of this website or this tutorial, for this tutorial, I'm going to stick with everything that is free or included. Before we select which template we're going to use, we need to make sure we go up to this right hand side here on this little arrow. We want to make sure we click on Elementor here. And that's going to mean we can use Elementor in order to modify our template. And we're going to click this template here, the Love Nature template. And it's going to walk us through a few things here that we can make some modifications straight away. So we can upload our logo that we've created and pop that straight in and we'll see that appear there. You can adjust the width. You can um, use whatever typography you would like. You can select a couple of different ones here just to see which one you like the look of. Uh, we're not really going to pay much attention to the color palette right now because we're going to change that later on. So we're going to hit continue. We're not going to use any of these for now. We're just going to continue. It's going to ask you to fill in some details and then all you need to do is click submit and build my website. And that's going to put together the template of a website that we are going to use. Now we can view our website and that's what everything looks like so far. Obviously we need to make a few changes and modifications and we're going to do that now. Section three then. We're ready to start customizing our website. So back to our dashboard. So you can see our menu here on our header section and on our footer. We have home, about, services and contact. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to change our menus so that it has home about blog and contact because this is a blog website. You can, of course, if you have some services, leave the services page and put in the required information, but we are going to go and we're going to modify that menu. To modify our menu, we need to go to appearance and then menus and we can click on this services page and we're going to delete that one or remove that one. And we want to add in our blog Page. In order to have a blog page appear here, we need to go back to our pages. So click on pages and then add a new page. And then you need to name this page blog. Make sure you have that up in the title of the page, B-L-O-G, and click on publish. That will give you a blog page. So then when we go back to appearance, oh no, not customize, sorry, appearance and menus, we want to obviously remove this one and add in, if we go to under pages, view all, we'll have our blog posts page. In order for this to become our posts page, I'm just going to add this to the menu. I'll pop it in right there. We can drag and drop that to wherever we want. I'm going to click on save. We want to go to settings and then reading. And we want to make sure our home page is set to the home page and our post page is set to blog. And that will ensure that our posts will appear in order that we post them on our blog page. And just click on save, save changes and we'll go back to our menu. And now when we go to our site and if we refresh, we'll see that we have our blog page appearing in, your, in our menu. Make sure that the menu, oh, our menu in our footer is also changed as well. We want to make a few more changes to this menu. So I don't want to have the phone number up here in this section. So what we want to do then is we want to go to under appearance and customize. This will take us to our menu section. And you'll see now that when we hover over the menu section, you will have these little pencil icons appear. And that will mean that means that we can edit those specific sections. So this is all fine, but this is the one that I want to erase. I want to get rid of this. So you'll see then when I click on the little icon, it brings us this little editor and it shows us that the primary menu is there, which it is. And then we have the button beside it, but I want to remove that. So I'm just going to click on the little X and you can see that that button is gone. So that's all I want to do. All the changes I want to make to that menu. So I want to just make sure I click on publish to make sure I save those changes. The other thing we want to do is make some changes to our footer section. So you can see our little pencil icons appearing again. So I'm going to click this one, 
but I'm going to change this to our own logo. So instead of having, you'll see this editor appear then again, under the HTML one, I'm going to actually delete that one. And then I'm going to add in a new widget. We're just going to select widget one and click the little settings icon. And this will allow us to add in our image. And then you can pop in the image of your logo in here. This is an extra one, don't want that. And you can edit the size that your logo appears like this. So you'll see then we have this little logo here. Want to make sure that it's centered by clicking on this alignment center. And that means it'll appear nicely in the middle of our page and click publish to save that. And we also want to change this little bit here. You can have whatever text you want to have here. You can have a little copyright section. You say copyright 2024. And then just make sure we click publish. The other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that all of our colors are in sync with the rest of our branding. So in order to do this, I would recommend if you don't already have a already have a color theme, use the colors that you've used for your logo, whether you've just created your logo or if you previously created your logo, either way, what I would advise using in order, if you don't already have the hex code keys for the colors, you can use a extension, Chrome extension called color pick eyedropper. If you put this onto your browser, then whenever you click on this little icon, it means that if you're on any web page and you like the color and you want to take that color, you can hover over that color. I don't think that was quite right. And you can get the hex keys for that color so that you can use that color anywhere else you want on your website. So we'll just make sure we have that exact color. That'll give us the key that we want. So we're gonna copy this, just control and C. So we have that color now, so we're going to get rid of that. And now we're going to go to a different section of our theme editor. And we're going to go to global and colors. And you'll see these are the theme colors we're using. So we're under color one, we're just going to select that. Now we're going to paste in, you'll see that this is using the hex keys here. So we're going to paste in the color we just took from our logo. And you'll see that this color has been changed to the exact same color from our logo. And you can see how that looks on our button here and the other section. So this little line, we're going to see that our text is still the green color. So you can leave that if you like that color or not. What I might do is I might just change it by clicking on this to a kind of grayish color I think so I don't really want black that's quite harsh but I want to just make it slightly grayer something like that and for the body text as well what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have the exact same color for this one I'm going to take that hex key there copy that and then go into the body text color and paste in that color so we make sure that those colors are exactly the same so you'll see now when we go down through our website that that is the color for our headings and our text. So it already looks really good. So the next thing we're going to do now is once we've hit publish on that, we're going to go through each of the individual pages and we're going to edit the text and edit the other content from the pages. So we're just going to go back to our WordPress dashboard. We're going to go to pages and we're going to start with our home page. And you'll see here when we hover over any of the pages, you'll have this little option for edit with Elementor. So you can either click on the name to get into the Elementor page builder that we're going to use and then click edit with Elementor, or you can just click on edit with Elementor from here. And that will open up this tab. It means we'll be able to edit all of the content for this page using our Elementor page builder. And you'll see that our menu no longer is visible here. That's because the menu is actually created using the WordPress theme and we can't actually edit that with our Elementor. The same with our footer section at the bottom. You'll see that we'll no longer be able to edit this. So for Elementor, we want to be able to modify all of the content on this page. So you can go ahead and change any of this text. Just simply click on the text and you'll see the text here. You'll be able to change that to whatever you want. You can also change this background image by clicking on the little dots at the top, going to style, and you'll see here the image. So you can click on that and choose whatever image you would like. Click 
use whatever image you want for your website. Now you can see that that image is a little bit too uh, obvious there, isn't it? We want to be able to put an overlay over the top of this so that it helps the text stand out a little bit. So if you have this issue, all you need to do is go underneath, you'll see background overlay. And what, because we've got light colored writing, we want to put a dark overlay. Dark overlay, we want to decrease the opacity or increase the opacity. So there we go, you can see that now that our text is standing out a little bit better. And you can also put a lighter overlay if you have dark text. So that's how you would modify that. This button then, we want this to lead to our blog page. So what we need to do is we need to click on that button and here is where we put the link to our blog page. And you'll see that should pop up there when we start typing in here, that'll automatically link to our blog page. So when someone comes to this page, we want them to come and click on that to view our blog posts. We wanna change the text then to something like blog posts something like that. And I'm also gonna change the color of that text a little bit as well. So for that, I'm gonna to go to, once we have this selection, this button selected, go to style, and that will allow us to edit how this button appears. So I'm gonna go text color. We wanna have something a little bit lighter there. That appears a little bit better. So once you're happy with the, your background image and all of your text, we move down to this next part. Now, because we're building a blog, I'm actually going to change this section. I don't want our services, but I I want our posts, our most recent posts to appear here instead. So how we're gonna do that is we're going to, we need another plugin for this. So Elementor Pro has a way for you to link to your most recent blog posts, but we want to stick to using the free version of Elementor. So for that, we need to use another plugin. But first, before we leave this page, we're gonna click on update. And then we are gonna go back to our dashboard and we're gonna click on plugins. We need add a new plugin. We're going to search for a plugin. The one we are looking for, the post grid by radius theme. Let's go for this one. There will be a few that may possibly work in this instance, but this is the one we're going to use for now. Like I mentioned before, with any themes or plugins you want to use, you want to make sure you're using something that has been used by lots of people and is currently supported. So this one says it's compatible with your version of WordPress, it's last updated quite recently, and it has 90,000 active installations. So that reassures us that this is an active theme that is currently still being taken care of by the developers. So we're gonna install that one now. I'm going to click activate. So now we're going to refresh our Elementor editor in this page because now under this section, instead of having services, we're going to have, oops, control Z if you do something wrong, our blog. If you go to these little dots at the top left here, this will lead you to all the different widgets, I suppose, that you have available to you. So I want my blog post to appear in this grid layout. So I'm gonna drag that over and I'm gonna pop that underneath there. And this is gonna give us a few different options as to how our blog posts are going to appear. You have three different options within the free plugin. Now we're not really gonna be able to see how they all appear because we actually don't have any blog posts created. So for now, we're going to update this page. Just move that up back up there. And we're gonna go back and we're going to create a couple of blog posts so that we can see how they actually will appear on our front page of our website. So let's go back to our dashboard and go into posts. This is where we actually create our blog posts. So we're gonna click on add new blog posts. We're just gonna quickly create a few dummy posts so that we can see how they will actually appear in real life. So I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna put in a featured image so that something will appear in that section of our blog post. I'm gonna pop in some dummy text. I'm going to go over to Aram Ipsum, get some dummy text for my website. Then I'm going to publish that post. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to create another blog post until I have three blog posts created. Now when we go back to our home page, I'm going to refresh that and you'll see that we actually have our blog posts populated automatically with a lovely little zoom in when we hover over the blog post featured image. We can choose what appears for these different blog posts. We can show the author, the categories. So you can see that these are currently on categories. And I'm gonna show you more how to correct, cor correctly create blog posts. But you might wanna say you don't want the category. 
you don't want the post author because maybe it's going to always be you the date you can get rid of that as well so that gets rid of some of the distracting stuff here I actually just get rid of metadata metadata altogether so you can see that you've got a little button here that will allow the readers to actually go to each of those blog posts and we're going to click update and then I'm just going to delete this section here because this is the services sec section that we're no longer going to use so instead of the services section, we have our post section and we don't actually need the section title either because we already have our blog post as a section title. Now, if we want to see what this looks like without this editor stuff in the way, we can just click on this little arrow and you'll see there that we'll see this just as our readers will. So there we have our blog posts beautifully displayed and we're going to move on then and edit the rest of the page and you're able to edit how many of the posts will appear in this section and which ones you want to include or exclude this is a little you can use this as a quote or you can use this as a feedback section if you have any of that you would like to display on your website if not you can just delete the section by using clicking on this little x or you can edit this content the exact same that we've, way we've been doing so far. We just need to select it by clicking on it and over on the left hand side you'll be able to do all of the editing within the content and the style. Because we've used the template, the starter template, everything should automatically look great, all designed as it should be. We shouldn't need to do any changes to the design features of this. So for now I'm going to delete this section because I don't need that. So I want to keep this super simple. I have a little bit of a header hero area, then our blog posts, and then we're going to have a little bit of an about section. I'm going to keep this in because you want to write a short bit about you or your business, put in the text here that you want exact same way that we have been doing by clicking on it and editing the text here. We can change our image by clicking on the image and click on the image here that you want to have and just if you want to put in an image that isn't in your media library, all you need to do is go to upload files, select the file and then select that from your computer and use that one, whichever image you want. This button, you want this really to lead to your about page because it's talking about you. You want this to link to your about page. So we, in order to do that, we want to click on the button and over on the left hand side, you'll see this link section and we want to link that to the about page. If you click in about, type in about, you'll see the about page and you just need to select that. So I would say read more. Perfect. What we can also do is we can edit some of this design by clicking again on the section and going to style and we can change some of these colors then. They're corresponding with the color that we have for our the rest of our page. So again, we can use our color picker tool to select that color. I should probably write this down so that um. You can use it quickly and easily because then we can change this color by clicking on this. We can actually pop in the hex key here. And then what we can do is we can create a new global color and create that color. So now when we go through this and edit any other part of the website, you'll be able to select that color easily. And we can do that with the border then of the button. So we can do that. Now you can see the new global color. We have that as well. We have there's a little hover effect there. So we see whenever you hover over it, it changes color. That's fine. So I'm quite happy with that section. Now we're going to move on to the next section. And this you can have as whatever you want. This might make sense to have this saying something like questions or would you like to get in touch with me? And we might link this then to our contact page. We want people to be able people to be able to find your details quickly and easily. So we want to link this then to our contact. Beautiful. Again, we can just close this section to see what it's going to look like. And again, we can have any image that we want in behind here just to kind of show you how that works. And if you click on these little dots that will select this section because we need to go into style and then image. And you're gonna need an image that really stretches the whole way across the page. Let's just change that image there. And we're gonna select that one. So you can see a different image. And you might want, like we had before, a different overlay in order to be able to see the text a little bit better. But you also wanna make sure that you select 
display size cover because if it's not it may appear like this or yeah just not the whole way across you want it to say cover no repeat also and scroll means it will go up and down with the page if you select fixed you'll see that it stays kind of looks like it's staying still on the page doesn't it so you can add that whichever way you want actually background overlay i'm just going to adjust that a little bit because you can't see the text very well so we can have a nice light one just increase that a little bit so you can see the the text a little bit better i might just uh, change the color of that text as well like i did before i'm going to select it go to style text color just going to have that a little bit brighter so we can see it a little bit better perfect and then i'm going to click update so that really is without getting bogged down in perfectionism and getting everything to look as amazing as possible and having loads of stuff on there we want to make sure we get this done so that you can go about the important task of writing your blog post and creating your content so this as it is looks really good and really ready to go so we're going to move on then and we're going to edit and customize our other pages so just make sure you've updated that and you can go back to your wordpress dashboard and we're going to go to our pages and we're going to edit our about page so i'm going to right click edit with elementor open link in new tab and we're going to edit this about page and this is the exact same process as we did before click on these little dots in order to edit this background image go to style pop in your image there change the text that easy change any of this text here change this text keep what you want delete what you don't want pop in like any your missions your values anything you can change this to about you about your family whatever it is you want to contain in your about page this is a, a really nice section for your readers to get to know a little bit more about you your background why you're writing your blog why you're starting your business etc etc so you can pop in a bit more of a description in there and when you're done just pop on update now we're going to go back to our dashboard and we're going to look at the contact page next this is exactly the same as before change the image change the text and you'll see here you can just pop in your details anything that you want to use for contact details and then we kind of have this like empty section here that is because usually you could have like a form in here so that people can fill in a form submit that form and that'll come through your website in order for people to get in touch with you easily we haven't got any form plugins there yet in order to do that all you would need to do is go back to our plugins we don't have any oh we do have wp forms so what we can do is we can go to wp forms light that's all we need for this and create a new form so we're just going to create this simple contact form and this is optional you do not need to have a contact form on your website if you want to keep it simple just make it so that people can send you a message or write you an email directly this is all fine we are not going to get bogged down in any of these other details just yet so we're going to save that form now what we can do we can go back to our contact page and we can pop in a form using wp form because Elementor Pro does have a form section, but it's not available with the free version. So that's why we're using WP Forms. That was the one we created, but actually that one actually looks a little bit better. And we're gonna click on update. We wanna fill it in as if we are a potential reader and we want to get in touch with you. Now, that says it is um, submitted. What we can do is go to our email and just see if we've received an email. I'm gonna give that a little bit of time to come through. So that's our about, our contact page and our home page all edited. Let's just pop into the front side of our website where our readers will actually see and just see what this looks like. We can just hover on that, hover over visit site and click on open link with new tab. This will show us what our website currently looks like. And you can just double check that everything looks as you would like it to. Because this is a blog website, the content really is about the blog posts. So as you create your content and you have more blog posts, you're going to have much more on your website. So you can see now that all of these little links will go to the different pages. This is your post page where our text posts have appeared, our about page and 
our contact page. Now I've just seen actually that these um, colors are still corresponding with the old design. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the contact page and we're just going to change those colors a little bit. So go to style and remember we saved our theme color, new global color, that's it, wasn't it? For the title and also for the description, that one and do that for all of these sections so just click on them go to style content new global color description do the same for that new global color and the same for these and i want to do the same for these social media icons these you can delete if you're not using them or what you can do is just click on each individual one and make sure you get the link to your instagram for example and pop that in there and then that will link through to your Instagram or your Facebook or whatever other social media links you want to use. New global color. Perfect. That's all our colors synced up. Oh, we didn't do the rest of this section actually. So you can delete this if you don't need any more. To be fair, for a contact page, you don't need any more on this page. Um, you could put in uh, some of your team members if you wanted to, they put their photos in here, but I'm just gonna delete this for now. I don't need that section. So you can say, see that's the way our contact page appears. Beautiful, clean, just click on update. We also wanna make sure that all of our pages are optimized for mobile. So what we'll do is we'll go back and through each page and we'll just click on this little icon at the bottom in responsive mode. We wanna make sure when our readers go to our tablet, their, to their tablets and view our website that way, that everything still looks as it should. So that looks fine. Go to mobile, that also looks fine. If you wanted to edit anything here you would just bring up your editor exactly the same as before if you edit something in mobile view it will only alter it in mobile view not in the larger views like desktop so that's your contact page close that one now and we will go back to our other pages and just double check the mobile optimization of those so with our about page open that one up again we're going to go down to the responsive mode Click on tablet, just close our little editor there. Looks great. Mobile. And you can also test what this is gonna look like as well. This is our, how our mobile navigation is gonna appear whenever someone's on mobile. And this is why I mean, try not to edit the appearance or the design so much of all of these different things, because if you edit it and you're not experienced with using the editor and uh, modifying the design when you come to mobile view sometimes things will look a little bit mixed up and it can be a little bit difficult to get it to look correct again which is why we use a template to start off with and we make basic edits to that template and this will make it quick and easy to get our blog off the ground last thing we'll do is we'll go back to our home page and we'll just make sure that that one looks good as well so we'll go back down to responsive mode just double check that That. and then mobile beautiful and make sure you update anything if you make any changes but that looks great section four your website looks great but how do we actually go about publishing our blog posts the next thing i want to do then is i want to show you how to correctly in create your blog posts so you saw how I created the demo post, I suppose you'd say. So you go to the little post icon here. And basically, this is where your list of posts will appear. So to create a new post, all you need to do is go to add post. You want to add your post title. Hopefully you will have done some keyword research to make sure that the posts that you are creating actually have a chance of being viewed or found on Google. And I have created a couple of videos on writing blog posts and making sure they're actually going to get your website visitors. So I suggest having a look at my channel if you're interested in any of those. But let's assume you know what you're going to blog about. So you pop in your title here. Let's say hi ride a bike. Let's keep it simple. Okay. And we're going to click publish publish again then we're going to go to edit with elementor because that changes it so that we're now editing our blog post with elementor not the wordpress editor so with this this will actually give us a nice little section here and we want to create our post within this section so you've got your title 
and you can see we've got these little uh, meta information here and the first thing I'm going to do actually um, we need to go back to our WordPress dashboard because this at the minute says buy and then it has my email address so what we actually want to do is we change this so that let's say your name you would want that to appear here or if you have someone else writing a blog post that their name will appear here so in order to do that we're going to go back to WordPress WordPress dashboard for a second and we're going to go down to users just going to select that and you'll see that I'm the only user on this website so far so I'm going to click my name that's going to allow me to change my details here so I'm going to change this to my name display name publicly as Helen and then we can keep the rest the same you could put in a little bio information here profile picture um, and if you need to reset any passwords that's not where that that's where you would do that. So let's just save that, update profile. And we'll go back to our posts then. We're going to click on that, edit with Elementor again, so we can edit our blog post. And now you can see that the name is actually my name. So now you can go in here and start editing your post. So what you now do is you will add in, you already have a title. You would start by putting in some text all your little widgets are over on this section here. So you can put a heading, you can use the text editor, pull that across and you can pop in whatever text you want. You can go back and you can pop in a image below that. You literally drag over the sections that you want. You can choose your image and pop that one in from your media library or upload it from your website or from your computer and basically go ahead and create your blog post this way. You've got lots of different things here that you can pop in. I spend a little bit of time and not too much time <laughs> creating this. And so you have a blog post that you're happy with. I'm gonna just update that. So I have another example blog post that will appear on my homepage. And that is how you go about writing your blogs and creating blogs that will automatically start appearing on your website. So if we now go to view our site on our homepage, we now have our new blog post appearing. However, there is no featured image. So what we need to do when we're in our blog post, so let's head back to our blog post. You click on the title, not edit with Elementor. If you come down here, you'll see featured image. That is what will appear on that little section. And just make sure you click update. You wanna categorize your posts. So at the minute, we only have one category and it's called uncategorized. So we wanna add a new category. So we wanna categorize our posts into a couple of different overarching categories. So we could say bike, because my first post was about riding a bike. You can put that into a parent category if you need. We can say add a new category. So that's gonna add bike. Generally, we don't wanna leave things as uncategorized because yeah, why would you want to have something published that's uncategorized? You want to have it all in categories. So now whenever you see that blog post, you'll see it come in that bike category. So for each new post you create, make sure you have the categories by adding the category and putting it into the correct category. That will organize your content, will help Google understand and your website blog post readers understand more about what your co content is about. Section five then, really important not to miss this section. We're gonna make sure that your website is optimized for mobile visitors, it loads fast, and your customers or potential readers can actually easily find your blog. First thing we wanna do just while we're on our dashboard here is we want to be able to SEO optimize each of these blog posts. In order to do that, we want to use another plugin called Yoast SEO. Now, there are lots of different plugins that will help you do this kind of thing. But I prefer using Yoast. So what we do is we need to go to add a new plugin, search plugins and type in Yoast, install, activate. And now when we go to our posts, so we're going to posts and then select the individual post. It's going to walk us through this configuration. So let's run through the data optimization click continue it's going to ask you for some details about your website i'm going to say i'm a person we have a lot of the information there already save and continue social profiles this is where you would add your social media profiles it will take you back to your user profile do you remember that we were in before this section here you can actually add in your social media profiles that way 
I'm going to save and continue for now. We don't need this. Save and continue. So let's set up the basics of our SEO. So now what we want to do, what I was going to show you, was go to your posts. Click on the title of the post. And you'll see now, we don't see our post here because we're, we have edited and created it with Elementor. But underneath the post, you'll see we have this new Yoast SEO section. And this is where we can add in things like our key phrase that we're trying to target and trying to appear in the search results for. We can also put in our title and our description. And SEO is quite good. It gives you a lot of prompts as to how to do this correctly. And actually, if you Google through Yoast, it will show you a lot of um, how to correctly do this. And you'll see that this is how your website will appear in the search results. You have your blog post name, you have the URL, and you have the title here of so what it is, the title of your website and the title of the post. Your meta description then is this little section here. So we can write a meta description that includes your keyword in it. Let's see what AI says. No, Yoast Premium. Okay, so you can pay for Yoast Premium. It'll help you create meta descriptions. But I'm going to link to a article in the description of this video on how to craft really good meta descriptions. So once you made any changes there, you can click update. Next thing we want to do is we want to go and make sure we have all of the caching services that we can use through our SiteGround hosting supplier. And caching is basically where browsers will remember and take data once someone visits your website and they will remember the content. So if we go to the speed optimizer tab here, I don't mind collecting the data. So we want to click go to caching. We want to turn on basically any caching that we have at our disposal. Now I have with SiteGround, I have more the more advanced plans. So I may have more caching at my disposal. So you may not have the mem cached one, but turn on whatever caching you have. And that will depend on which hosting plan you started off with. And at this point, we're also going to go back to our site grind because that's remember where we signed up for our hosting. And I'm going to show you how we can optimize our website from that end as well. So once you've logged in, you want to go to websites and you see that I have a number of websites, but this is the one that is the website that I'm working on. We want to go to site tools and you'll see the icon here, speed and caching. So you may need to turn on your caching from here in order for it to work here. So you can see we've turned those on and that will help improve the speed at which your website loads for the users. We want to make sure we have HTTPS, so an SSL certificate on our website. So we need to do that by going to our SiteGround dashboard, going to security, SSL manager, and you'll see here we have a SSL certificate installed. So we want to force the connection to be forced over a HTTPS connection, which forces a secure connection basically. So we want to make sure this is turned on. This will log us out, we'll have to be logged back in again. Okay, so that's our caching is working. The next thing we want to do then, in order to comply with a lot of the GDPR rules in Europe anyway, you need to have a cookie policy in this where people have to say that they're okay with your website using cookies, basically. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to plugins. We're going to need a new plugin for this. The one I like to use is called Compliance. So if we search for that one, it's this one here. So we can install that. And it will take us through a setup wizard that will keep us GDPR compliant. So if we go back to the plugins page, it's going to take us through a setup wizard. So just click on next, start wizard, select whichever country that you're in in order in so that you are complying with the right laws for your country. So I am in Europe. Do you target visitors from Germany, Austria, Belgium or Spain? No. We don't have anyone with login access. Save and continue. We want to generate a cookie policy with compliance. Privacy policy. We should have a page generated. We're going to come back to that part because we do need to just publish our privacy policy. We don't need any of those. Now you need to pop in your details and this will all appear 
through your cookie policy or your cookie banner. So you need to just walk through this startup wizard. No, no, no. It's going to scan for cookies that we use. Click on continue. Do you compile statistics? At this stage, no, we're not using any Google Analytics or anything. We're okay keeping all of those for to know for now. We want to save and continue. We're going to create our cookie policy. We want to show the consent banner. And this is how the consent banner will appear. And you can go through and edit any of this, exactly what it looks like and different colors, but I'm going to keep it just as it is. Now, that's our cookie policy taken care of. Let's just go back and make sure we have our privacy policy completed. You can see here that this is nearly always created whenever you create your WordPress. So we're going to just go in and we're going to see what it already has created. And you can go through now. I can't really advise you too much as to what uh, needs to go into your privacy policy. A little bit of research is needed on your part, depending on what kind of information you have on your website. Basically, you can keep a lot of the suggested text on your privacy policy and just get rid of obviously the suggested text part because obviously not a lot all of this will apply to you and your website but you can just go through and you can see this auto populated the website address here and just click on publish to make sure that this page is actually published and you remember we had with compliance is uh, where it asked us for the privacy statement we can do existing one now and privacy just save that. Perfect. We don't need to go through the rest of it again. Congratulations on building your very own WordPress blog. If you want to know how you can write an amazing blog post, then I would suggest watching this video next. Thanks for watching.